Okay, now we have something, my friends. Now we have something. This is unbelievable. Look at this. It can go incredibly slow. Eleven seconds. Okay, I apologize for the crude nature of this. I just wanted to blast through it quickly to show you guys what was available. This is kind of your entry level into pan and tilt, motorized pan and tilt. You've got the best score 101. The base unit's only about $150. It can handle up to six pound capacity, which is pretty good, but it obviously doesn't have the same ability and capabilities that the Vid Pro has. So there's our Vid Pro at 305. You've got the Seven Oak here at twice the price. It wasn't available anyway. Um, it uh, uh, is essentially the same unit, but they've colorized a couple pieces. And without holding them both in my hands, I can't really tell you know the difference between the two. Um, and these are work with other systems. And then we kind of jump to something like this, and you're right into what would be a robotic head. And to get to the weight capacity to exceed the VidPro past uh, 12 pounds, you need to go to $3,000. So, and you can buy a whole robotic arm getting into this price range. So you can just see how quickly, you know, well, that's 10 times the money of the VidPro. So it's really not even a consideration, you know, and you can, and they go up from there. You can spend easily $30,000 on a very professional, uh, smooth working camera you know, rig. So that's a little rundown of what's available for you guys. Let's get back to this unboxing and assembly. Welcome to the Philip Cochran channel viewers. Please like, subscribe, share, and comment. It really helps this channel grow and it helps me bring you these great videos that we all love. Look what we have today, folks. This is unbelievable. This is just an amazing piece of kit to own. Brand new Vid Pro professional photo and video motorized pan and tilt gimbal head. It is exactly what it sounds like. Um, it's not a stabilizer. It's just a pan and tilt gimbal head. So I looked at all the stabilizers that were available on the market. So as far as gimbals and stabilizers go, many people are familiar with our, you know, our cell phone model. This is a DJI Osmo 2. Um... And they do make these for DSLR cameras. You've got the Xeon Crane 3, the DJI Ronin, and the Moza stick. Or Moza, I think it is. Um, and there's a, there's a couple others rebranded and stuff like that. But a lot of them, the max capacity is only 10 pounds. And they're $900 and more. So... A lot of those other models, they're going to be okay. And you'll see people using them with, you know, DSLRs. Yes, and you can, right? But there's a huge difference between this Rebel, what is this, a T, T4i, um, and this Canon 7D Mark II. Okay, let's put them down side by side. You can kind of see that's physically different. Now, they both take the same lenses. So if I put my big heavy lens on this camera, it becomes a big heavy camera, <laughs> you know? Um, the lens has a lot to do with it, right? But there is a you know distinct difference between camera bodies. If you take the lenses off, this body is about half the weight of this body. And the same kind of goes with those mirrorless ones too, right? They're much, much lighter than, than these type of DSLRs. So, uh, you know, you've got to take all those things to consideration. And then also you're more than likely you want to have some attachments or something, maybe on your camera or on the rig, like a light, a microphone, or multiple of those things. Um, who knows? So, you know, more weight capacity is obviously, you know, going to be desired on this, right? And you don't want the thing to be working at 90% capacity, you know, or 100% capacity. So in the engineering world, we call that a service factor. So... You want things to have what would be a two to one service factor. So that means if it takes five horsepower to move this car, you want to have 10 horsepower in it. So it's only working at 50% capacity. So that's a two to one service factor on it. So if you need a camera or you need a 
gimbal head to hold a 10 pound camera, you should really have a 20 pound capacity. So that way it's not working itself all the time. That's what is all included. We've got the head, we've got the remote, we've got the two motors. So you can see they, they're the same, but there's two of them. Two 20 foot long extension cables or adapter and a nice soft carrying case. There's the specs there and the model number. So it's an MH430. Not much on that side there. So it says. And then on the front side there, we've got another couple of nice pictures. And nothing on the bottom. So let's open this thing up. It's about this. Up. Yeah, it doesn't say VidPro on the case there. At least it's got a case for it if you do want to take it anywhere. Ooh. We got some destructions there. VidPro MH430. Maybe there's too much to it. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. Bolt it together. Connect it together, balance your camera in it, turn it on. So, what do we got here? There's our cables, the actual control units to the cameras. Two of those, and it's two times 20. Disilicate pack there. Looks like that's got to be a motor because it's pretty heavy, I think. Yes, sir. Oh, see, it's got that cover on it so that's like that more expensive uh, what seven oak ones have there it looks like this part here is different on the seven oaks model unless there's another piece that's in here i haven't seen yet um just nice well made it's all aluminum hardened steel gears you can tell by the color and stuff there of it so the i only heard two complaints really about this consistent that was in the reviews. And there was lots of reviews on uh, even the website that I bought it that were, uh, you know, just descriptive and whatnot. So the two complaints are that the motors are noisy. So if you're trying to film a panning shot and your microphone and you're using the microphone on the camera itself there, you're going to hear like motor noise, right? Um, and that they were um, uh, hard to install to get the gears mesh to line up, come on camera. So um, this gear has got to line up with the gears on there, right? So if the gears aren't, if the gears are too tight, it won't turn because there's too much force on it. And if they're too loose, it can skip on the gears. So, you know, from the RC car world, you know, we know a lot about this, about what we call gear mesh, right? And having backlash and stuff like that on the gears, right? But camera folks wouldn't know about that. So I can see that, you know, while lining up two gears on the thing. So some people complain like, well, the motors aren't installed on it. Well, well, you can see that would make the unit quite a bit bigger to package and carry if they did that, right? And this also makes it modular too, because if one of these motors goes... You know, I could just move one from the other spot. So if I, if, or I've seen actually a couple other people set this up and they only have one motor on it because once it's set up and in the, you know, the position that they want it to, they just need to, you know, put the camera up and down or they just need to turn it left and right. They don't need to go up and down anymore. So you can just take one motor off. Nice option to have. What else we got here? That looks like a little power. Adapter. There's 12 volts, I think this unit is there. That is some straps. Looks like some Velcro straps to hold the cables down. And there's an Allen key. And there's a plastic mount piece that looks like there. I don't know what that is for yet. A couple of Allen screws and, well, it's not plastic, it's actually metal. We'll figure what that is in a second. So it's all aluminum, very well made. It's got some nice indicator marks on it there for setting height and things like that. So that's what your motor is gonna mount to and you're gonna line up the gears with that. Same thing on the bottom portion. That's gonna be your tripod mount there. So that's basically the unit. 
it's kind of about a foot tall or so overall length. And then our piece de resistance. Oh, look at this thing. This is cool. This was almost worth buying it just for this. <laughs> I mean, if you love remote control stuff, you know, and joysticks and things there, that's it. So, oh, the only other, I guess, uh, issue that some people had, and I guess they didn't realize this from not reading in, you know, the description or something properly, right? But so you've got your left and right, and then the up and down tilt for the cameras. Um, but these, but this is not a proportional switch. Okay, it's on or off. So it isn't like if you push it a little bit, it goes slow, and a lot it goes fast, like you would kind of expect when you see this. The speed is controlled by the this knob here. So if you push it up, it just starts the motor, and then you control the speed here. So if you want it to start slow and go fast, you can use a pan method like that. So some people complain that, oh, I need two hands on the unit to do it, uh, you know. You're going to have to go to $3,000 or more to not do that. So <laughs> that's a pretty pricey uh, step up. But look at this unit, man. Like, this is solid. This is all made out of steel. Okay, so there's your, that's what your mount, that mount thing is for then. So I guess you can mount this to the side of your tripod is their idea there. And keep that fixed, you know, or another location. They're 20 foot long cables, so that's actually good for me because I'm probably, you know, I can mount this over by my desk or something like that and just move the camera, which was kind of like the intention of this, you know, just it's being able to reposition the camera here in the studio without having to keep moving tripods and realigning tripods and all that kind of stuff. So that's going to save me a lot of effort and the space needed too, the floor space. So that lens that's on that camera there, I just got this and we're down to 10 millimeter here now. That means I can be eight feet closer to get the same shot with this camera. Eight feet closer. My studio is only like 20 by 20 here. So eight feet is huge. <laughs> you know, that means I have, I've got like, you know, five more places I can put the camera now where I couldn't before because I was fixed. I was right maxed out. I was right at the back wall. If I wanted to get a wider shot or do anything different, I would have to cut a hole in the wall and stick the lens through it <laughs> to come through. So, um, you know, I was kind of desperate to get down to that lens size too. So that new lens and this this uh, rig is really gonna um, make a big difference for me for filming and stuff like that. So um, I'm gonna get it. Uh, oh, I've got a tripod picked out, one of my older ones here. Um, and uh, it's a nice solid model. It's it's pretty old, and it's big and beefy and heavy, but it is light. It's very light. This is definitely full aircraft aluminum on this. And this piece here, this was one solid block, and they machined out this whole thing just to get those two little ears. So these pieces here, they're not welded onto here. This is one solid piece, and they machined it all out just to get those two ears out of it. So this is kind of a quality old uh, item and it's strong and light and stuff there. So, and the nice thing about it too, is it looks like because of the height of this, I only have to pull out the second segment on here. So the, the um, footprint that this tripod now takes up is now like a fourth or a third of the size that it would without having to use it, without using this on top of my thing. So that's huge too, because now I can actually, um, get around the studio more <laughs> easier without tripping over tripods and stuff all the time because that is a pain and it it prohibits me from filming because I'm like oh god I gotta set everything all up and do all of this right so this is kind of you know make life easier and hopefully more efficient to bring you guys more great videos that we all love so I'm gonna get it mounted on there and then we're gonna install the the motors on it and we'll hook up the, put the camera on it, and then you guys can see it working and hear the noise that it makes. And, uh, you know, make your final judgment yourself of whether or not this is a product that you're interested in, or you've just hung out with me on this video watching something cool being unboxed and demonstrated on the Philip Cochran channel. So stick around, folks. We'll be right back. Well, I almost skipped over the assembly here, but I figured, well, some folks might want to see that. So when you see me in these videos, throw away the instructions, go, oh, we won't need those folks and joke around. That's kind of on purpose, right? Because 
as some of you may know, I was an engineer, and if I can't figure out a simple consumer product that's sold to every Joe Blow out of the box, then maybe it's not designed very well or it's overcomplicated to use. Now, I'm not discounting that there might be critical information in instructions that you need, like dimensions and things like that, uh, to assemble something, you know, or what screw goes where or something like that. But as far as, you know, just picking something up and is it easy to use, you know, yes or no. Um, and, you know, we all want to see products designed better that way. Now, as far as this goes, it's a very simple device. You know, you've got power into the unit and two outputs to each motor. They're not really assigned until you bolt them onto the gimbal itself. They, uh, and that's it. You know, you push the joystick and they, and they work. Oh, that's for that one. Can see it turning there. Now, as far as the noise goes, that's a snowplow behind me. I don't know if you can hear. <laughs> as far as the noise goes, <laughs> they don't sound very noisy to me at all. Now, you know, yes, if you're using the microphone on your camera, I'm sure it's going to pick up that noise, but. Um, you know, I mean, let's get it installed in the rig and when it's actually moving the gear and before we make any final judgment. But that is not what I was expecting because from what people reviewed, and there's only a couple of videos really on this specific model out there and not, you know, everybody mentioned the noise, but nobody really kind of filmed it or said, oh, well, you know, here it is compared to something else or whatever. Oh, now he's beeping and backing up. So I'm going to have to stop, I think, for a sec. <laughs> okay, I think the snowplow's gone. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to move this aside, and then I'm going to pull over the uh, tripod and show you how I mounted that. All right, I think you guys can see that there. So this gimbal mount on the bottom, if you noticed in the video when I showed you the base, it's got three holes on it. There's two quarter twenty holes and one three eighths hole in the center. So that's why it looks like it's off center on the base of here now, because it actually is. I'm going into one of the quarter 20s that's offset to the side. I'm going to change it to the 3 8 one when I find another 3 8 adapter. Uh, the difference between those two is significant. While well, quarter inch is plenty strong enough, should be to hold a camera. Just to give you an example from engineering point of view, quarter 20 is 200, 400 pounds of sheer strength to break in half. And uh, 3 8 can take 800 to... 1600 pounds on it so it's a big huge difference so if you have a 3 8 mount to mount this vid pro gimbal head to use that because it's going to be much stronger and you'll be able to keep it centered in your thing so you might have seen that also when i on this video of the pan and tilt dolly that i made last week and because this has also 3 8 and a quarter inch mounts to it as well and I'm using the 3 8 mount on here. So this adapter would be perfect for here because it's got 3 8 to a quarter inch where I screwed this pan and tilt head onto. So as far as uh, bolting it on, get it as tight as you can, <laughs> you know. Um, and then as far as balance goes, you know, you can eyeball it at first to get it kind of lined up. However, your tripod mechanism works it might only be one handle it might be two like this one here is um snug it up get it eyeballed straight and then do a couple of little small spin tests like this and you'll see where it kind of wants to go and you see it kind of wants to it's really close right now it's very very close actually right now um but it wants to kind of fall back towards the camera kind of each time that i spin it yep so it, you know, it needs to lean towards the guitars to, to balance it a little bit. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to loosen that thing just a tiny bit and just like, you know, give it a little tap kind of in that direction to see if that has any effect. It looks like it did, but not quite enough. So you're going to need to do this a couple of times. So you kind of get it, you know, as perfect as you like. And then you can also do it this way and back. 
Another good method to check is if you put your hand around this base here, and especially if you're being in contact with your tripod, and you spin this, you can kind of feel which way it's pulling and wobbling, and that can also help you with the alignment. So that's about it. You really want to get everything as centered as you can and straight as you can with the gimbal head onto the tripod before you put your other attachments on, like the motor and the camera and so forth. So just take your time until you're happy with it. Remember, if you move it around, like I need to do here, and my floor is very, very uneven, as some of you know, uh, you might have to redo this, right? So um, just be prepared to do that. So let's get the motors and uh, get those mounted up. As far as uh, mounting goes, I'm just going to use the one that came with it right now. I do have some um, quick disconnects for my camera. These are some nice uh, Manfrotto ones, right? But I'm just going to mount the camera directly onto here first to check that. This has got some nice little increments here to be able to move. And, you know, you know that maybe a certain camera needs to be offset at certain balance. And this, in a sense, can be a quick disconnect, if you will, because this piece... Um, slides out of there, it did slide out of there, maybe it's got a bowl, something to it, it's just not loose enough, oh it's just not loose enough to get over those uh, things, but you could use that as a quick disconnect I would think because that's pretty fast, easy to lose and you know you, know you need to, you know you know where your balance part is, if you, if you had it at three and then you took it off and then you go to remount your camera, you just put it back to three and you know it's going to be balanced, so I, Kind of pretty sure that that's why that is there. Same with the increments and stuff up on the side as well. So let's get those motors mounted and get a. I'll show you that step and then we'll mount the camera onto it and then we'll watch it go. Okay, I zoomed in a little bit closer so you can see the motor mounting. It's a little bit easier to see the side than it will be to the bottom. So you've got this pin that sticks out of the gimbal itself with a step on it so it can only go on so far you just push it till it won't go any deeper and it should be flush here and then you can snug it up so it's you know able to move and you want to just push it up to the gear and you might be able to feel it kind of click in and you turn this back and forth you want to kind of feel a tiny bit of movement there but it's going to need to be pretty snug because this is a very fine tooth mesh so basically push it up there give it a little bit of a snug with your control with your uh, retainer and then test it and there we go it's working really good there's no play there's no you know noise from the gear itself i'm happy with that so i'm gonna snug it up so there's a big difference between it being tight enough to operate and then it being like locked down. You saw how much I turned that. That was pretty good. So it's not going anywhere now. All right, so I'm going to do the bottom motor uh, and then we'll get the camera going. Okay, the only difference on the bottom of mounting is the pin that you push the motor onto. It doesn't have the step on it that the upper one does. So you're really just pushing it flat up to the bottom of it and the motor lines up and that's it. So this is how you test backlash on gears. You need to have, you know, fit, hold your finger on one gear, fix solid, and then wiggle the other one back and forth. And you want those teeth to have a little bit of movement in there, just a tiny fraction. If they're bound in tight they don't want to work properly and they could strip them and wear them down stuff too okay so both motors are on everything's working good that's just the screw on the base they're moving back and forth this is as exactly as loud as i expected it to be guys like you're really close to this thing as you can see and it's it's really not that loud at all I'm gonna slow it right down here. It kind of makes a different tone, you know, at the different speeds that it goes. Well, that's the slowest. It can move really slow. Wow, look at that. 
I didn't know it could go that slow. And then that's, that's the fastest. Cool. All right, let's get a camera on it. Well, this is the only complaint I could have so far. Um, you can't really get in there with your fingers to tighten that, you know, any strength on your directly to your camera. So you really need a coin or something to get in there to tighten that. It would be awesome if it had that little ring thing on there to tighten it up by hand and then it flips down out of the way. It's the only thing I would change on this so far. Yeah, there's just enough room to take the card in and out of the camera. Will it do anything? Perfect. Okay, now we have something, my friends. Now we have something. This is unbelievable. Look at this. That's kind of, uh, that's almost full speed. It's about half speed. And that's slow speed. It can go incredibly slow. Which is kind of what you want for beautiful camera footage and shots. You can kind of see what the camera's pointing at a little bit there. So I just centered, I pushed this mount all the way to that side because that's where it wants to go. That one is all the way to the bottom, but there's tons of adjustment that you have there. And then as far as the side to side, speed it up, go this way. As far as the side mounting goes, the camera's a little bit offset to the mount, just to compensate for the lens that I have on there. So you can see right there that I've got that, the camera not quite in the center lined up at that bolt. It's a little bit offset to the back, just to compensate for the lens. And I should be able to put some pretty big lenses on here, which is cool. And being it holds 12 pounds, you could put all kinds of objects on here that you would want to point things at, right? So, I'm gonna have some fun playing with this. And we'll see you guys on the next video. Again, please like, subscribe, share, and comment. It helps me bring you these great videos that we all love. That's our show for today, folks. Love and peace from Canada. And we are YouTube. Eleven seconds.